Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Garden Gurus Live. I'm Joanne Harris, and I'm really pleased to be here with you this Friday. I'd like to say thanks very much for the wait this morning. Um, I had a funeral. It was Bob Melville's funeral this morning, and I really wanted to attend it. So I appreciate you all waiting until this afternoon for the live show. And of course, welcome back to this is our last show for 2022. Um, I'm back here, ready to answer all the questions today, and we'll, but we'll be joined first by a very special guest all the way from Bali. Um, we'll also give away some very exciting prizes with over $450 in Garden Express gift vouchers um, are to be won. If you haven't entered already, comment your favourite story from the Garden Gurus on the live chat for a chance to win. Entries for the competition will be closing halfway through the program. Um, during this one, and uh, we'll be drawing the winners at the end of the show. We also have some exclusive sneak peeks of the last two episodes of the Garden Gurus, episode three of the uh, Best of Garden Gurus, and episode 15 of the Classic Garden Gurus show. So make sure you watch those. It's the last show for the year. Um, we have another amazing deal from you from Garden Express on gift cards, and we'll have Rowan from the team here talking to us. And later, I'll be sharing my plant of the week with you. I've got some ideas for Christmas. And of course, don't forget to ask any of your gardening questions in the live show. Please make sure you include um, your location so that I can best answer for your environment. Well, let's go to this exciting visitor of ours, guest of ours, coming all the way from Bali. Are you there? Hey, well, I I am. you are. How are you, Trevor? Welcome to New to Dua. This is the resort on the on the beautiful. Oh, I am great. You're looking backdrop. It's <laughs> Isn't it spectacular? It's, it's really, fantastic. It your, your backdrop's not too bad either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually yeah. had for a long period of time. I'm working extensively and family away for five days so so nice, uh, nice. it's um beautiful. this has been a part of the world oh it is it's beautiful i i can i can smell it i can smell the frangipanis with the the smell of the the red i love the rain in tropics yeah. can you smell, smell the mangosteen yes <laughs> there's, two, there's two fruit that are all there's two main fruits that are this one, and uh, speaking of, of um, smelling, famous for that saying, that smells of it. It is absolutely terrific fruit. Once you get, get used to it, and it, yeah, yeah, you're breaking up a little bit, Trev, but we, we'll fill it in. Okay, we'll fill it okay. in. We'll fill in the blanks. Um, so it's Just, been it's been quite a year for you. Oh, it's been very, very, very busy with the Garden Guru. Episode 38 is the last episode that we'll play. There's a lot of gardening content, absolutely flat out. We've been answering questions by you, Joe, which, you know, I, I'm you've done here. And, and thank you very much for up when I, I needed a bit of help. I really that's okay. Just as you were just singing my praises, you we couldn't hear you. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, really? I, I was saying <laughs> oh, no. fantastic you were. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, I have to I have to say thank things... you to you also. I I enjoy doing this. I love the, the live show. I think we have some great followers and um, I really appreciate the opportunity to do it. Not a problem. Joe, for that. We've been friends for so long. It's great to see you sharing the public. I know you do it through your garden centre destination. If you've been paying to Bedford, you've got to know it is a stunning Joe, talk about it for a second because I can't find anywhere else. Talk about what, Trevor? Say the word. You have plants at Guildford. The seems to have in Perth. You, you yeah. Collect them. So 
talk about that just really briefly. Um, we do. It's one of the things that we we pride ourselves on having really good quality stock. So we buy from accredited um, growers. And then I also go out and I seek out the rare and unusual. Um, in fact, Trevor, yesterday I moved houses because I'm about to renovate. And I moved into Whistlepipe, what was Whistlepipe Nursery, into oh. Margie Clemmer's old house. And... Um, yeah, it was one of the, the things I got from Margie was the treasures that she had, the, 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 the unusual, the rare and unusual, the things that would grow really well in our climate, but people would think, oh, no, that's a little perennial, that will never do it. And um, it really sparked an interest for me. So, um, yeah, we, we do. And, and I think most importantly is we have really good quality stock. You also mentioned Bob Melville. Today. A lot of people won't know Bob, but Bob was the press party. Um, uh, second, understood growing roses is better. Funeral was held in Bob's garden, garden, overflowing with run magnificent perennials. Right? Uh, there were some things in there that I can't get any longer. Um, uh, and you know, it was, it was almost like that gardener in me wanted to whip out my secateurs and take a couple of seeds off the top of the plant. Wouldn't do that. <laughs> the garden is stunning. It was really stunning. And I've known Bob for as long as I've known you the whole time I've been in the industry. So it's almost 30 years. And um, it was a, a really fitting funeral. It was quite lovely. Did you know that Bob was the first person to put, you probably do, um, roses into pots? I didn't know that that's you know one, one of the things that bob really did, you know bob bob was a real, real free thinking intelligent man but one, um identified and champion stock for the right environment and it's a good environment to go roses in the soil and and that grow on their own roots or root stocks and so bob you know, he championed Rose Rootstock called Fortuniana. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the other thing. Um, yeah, it was a great celebration. It really was. And there was quite a few industry people there as well as just people that had bought from him. They, they almost advertised it, and I don't mean that in any crude sense, um, but it was great. It was open. It was open to all and sundry to come to the funeral and made quite clear and quite welcoming. So, yeah. Well, uh, condolences. I know both, both, both Bob's sons were, 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 would have been quite, quite devastated because it was quite, quite sudden. But he yeah. is a legend of the industry and, and it was good. Uh, and obviously see him, him as there. But um, sometimes you can't. Uh, I did, did, did want to say, hey, um, I, I know here, it's not, not great, great, but our listeners of our viewers, uh, the Garden Guru is live. It's a tip and it's a chance to interact with people and to experience things not just all over the world. So I, I personally everybody a very merry new year. And to you, Trevor, and to, to your family also from us here um, in the studio. Enjoy your time in Bali. Have a great um, great break because you deserve it. Regards to the family. Have fun and you hear the rain. No, that, that's the. That's, that's the <laughs> no, unfortunately, we've got a bit of a technical <laughs> difficulty, so we're going to say goodbye to you now. Enjoy your time. We'll see you next year, Trevor. And um, yeah, safe travels. No worries. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks. Guys, I'm sorry about that if you couldn't hear completely. Um, Trevor's always got some great things to say, but it was a little bit hard at this end, so I hope it wasn't quite as bad for you guys. So what we're going to do now is um, we are going to speak with Rowan at Garden Express because Rowan's got a great um, little gift card to mention. Morning, Rowan. Hi, Joe. How are you going? Good. Oh, it's much easier to hear you than it was to hear Trevor. I had a big thing in my mind that I was going to skip every second word, but I couldn't do it to you. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really hard. I could kind of see his mouth moving, and I knew what he was saying, but 
Yeah. Never mind. That's a shame. Next time. But he's in Bali, so he can be forgiven. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have, um, it's the end of the year. It is. It's the That's final it. one for us, uh, Rowan. Isn't it? So um, yeah, we're, everyone everyone's uh, now having a bit of a bit of a break. We 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 will be working right up until the twenty second, the end of play on the twenty second. But um, yeah, it's a bit of a skeleton staff here at the moment. There's not too many people around. Um, yeah, <laughs> nice. But you guys were really packing it last last week. I bet you were just flat out trying to get everything out to to try and meet the Christmas deadlines for everyone as best we can. Yeah, yeah. yeah well done. It's always a is a little bit of a struggle this time of the year but um yeah uh, yeah hopefully everyone gets ordered in, in time but i love this idea of your gift card um not only are you giving a 20 percent bonus so i buy a gift card say for a hundred dollars but my friend or family ends up getting it for 120 that they can spend yeah yeah uh so so obviously that's that you know it's a it's a nice thing to uh, to give to people this time of year and getting that 20 percent extra value just just allows them to buy um a little bit more and and uh enjoy the the gift a little bit more so um we've got four available um we we've got a 50 that you'll get 60 dollars value for we've got a um a uh, hundred that you'll get a hundred and um Hundred and twenty dollars worth of value, one hundred and fifty to one hundred and eighty, and and two hundred to two forty. Uh, so yeah, it's um it, it's good. It's fantastic, actually. I think it's great. It's been quite a year, Rowan. You've um given us and our our um, viewers uh, some amazing deals. You know, um, bulbs, um, anthuriums, all sorts of things along the way. It's been a lot this season, hasn't there? I um yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to enter the competition, but my favourite, uh, my favourite one was probably the um, the uh, blue kangaroo pork. You can't go past it, can you? No, um, no, the, I love it. Over it uh, at um, oh, it's cut, gone. You, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, um, I do. The and, celebration lines. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful um, colours, and the blue one's stunning. But all that range is stunning. Yeah, they really are. And they're so different, you know. You, you see them, I've got a neighbour that put one in and she's got quite a few kangaroo paws. And as I'm driving past, you can, it just bings, you can see it in amongst everything else. So you don't have to have 50 of them to make an impression. They can just be dotted, you know, waved through your garden. It, it looks fantastic. So that's my favourite. Guys, put me down. I, put I, you I, down? <laughs> there might be a little bit of nepotism there if you won, though, Rowan. Don't yeah. think it's going to work this time. Yeah. Look, I hope you and your family and everybody at Garden Express has a wonderful Christmas. Thank you very and much. And thank you for your support again this year. It means a lot to the garden gurus um, to have Garden Express on. Um, I know personally I buy your stock from my garden centre and I know the quality that you, you have. Um, so, yeah, it's, we really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm much the same as what you were saying to Trevor early, earlier about the quality. I mean, we, we, we're the same as you. We'll only send out quality that's good. And then if for whatever reason it doesn't, not that it happens very often, but if it doesn't arrive, then we also have our 100% guarantee. So yeah, we'll, um, we'll get you a new plant out. Otherwise, we'll um, ref refund you fully. So, yeah. Can't ask for much more than that, really. I mean, we're dealing with a living product too. And um, yeah, you guys do it an impressive, an impressive way. Next time in Mer I'm in Melbourne, I'd like to come over and meet you all and have a look at some of the things you do, just so that we can talk even easier. Yes, you're <laughs> welcome at any time. Thank you, Rowan. Well, look, thanks for your time this year. Uh, thanks for being part of the gurus. And um, I hope you have a very safe and happy one with lots of laughter and love from your family. Thank you very much. Back to, back, straight back at you. And um, yeah, Thank we'll you will be involved again for sure. All right. Catch you soon, Rowan. Have okay. a safe one. Bye. All right, guys. So uh, get your answers in there. You've got to beat Rowan. He can't win anything. So let's see what we can do. All right. Let's get on with some questions, shall we? Um, so Denise is in Bell Divers, and she sent us in a video. Um, these are bees are making themselves at home in the backyard garden. Are you able to identify the D? Bee. Is it a native leaf cutter bee? No, I think it's actually a blue banded bee that I saw um, on the video. 
Um, so yeah, have a look at the Blue Banded. You know, um, there's a woman called Faye Akaro who uh, does the Curtain Radio Show on a Saturday morning, Faye and Ray. Um, and she is probably, for me, one of the, the most experienced and knowledgeable people on bees, on insects, and especially the uh, Blue Banded. Uh, you might want to give her a call and have a bit of a chat on the radio with her about it also. Um, okay, and now we're in Warwick and Bex has asked, she says, hi, Joanne, I've just moved into a house and was left these plants, but I have no idea what they are or how to look after them. Please, can you give me some advice on maintenance and what type of plants are they? Thank you so much. Okay, so this one here, gosh, that's funny. This one here is um, a pothos. And it's a very easy plant to grow. It's one of those plants that you can grow in water, you can grow in a pot. It likes just a neutral soil, so it does, it's not too fussy. Um, and I love the way they've wound it around that light fitting too, uh, which is perhaps why they lift it for you. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's a pothos, very easy. Just some good liquid fertilizer is all you need. Um, and that should, uh, that should stay really nice and healthy. One of the things that you need to know is they all like good sunlight, okay? So you've got to have um, adequate light for indoor plants. There is no indoor plants. So we take plants indoor. And, um, and so if we could just make sure that you've got good, adequate light for them, enough water, don't let them sit in too much water, otherwise they rot. Um, if you find that it's getting a bit long, a bit leggy or a little bit brown on the ends, cut some off, put it into a vase of water and grow it on your mantelpiece, you know, on your windowsill perhaps, um, and then that the original plant will fatten up a bit for you. The other one on this side is a hoya, and I see that there's a flower um, on that right up near the top, on the top left-hand side, left-hand for me anyway. Um, now, Hoyas um, are really quite easy plants to grow indoors, but a Hoya will not flower unless it has adequate sunlight. So if you find that you've got this, um, the Hoya that you've got and where it's hanging and it doesn't um, give you any more flowers, then you might find three things, actually. It must have good adequate light, okay? It doesn't like hot sunlight, but it needs, and I suspect it needs a little bit more than where it is although perhaps more sunlight's coming through than what that photo is indicating. Um, and also they like to be a little bit pot bound or not pot bound, they like to be tight in their pot is probably a better way to describe it. Um, and then uh, the other thing is fertilizer. They do like a bit of fertilizer too. So a little bit of power feed or eco grow, something like that, eco vital at least. All right, so um, they're not hard to look after. Don't overwater plants. That's one of the biggest things people do, the worst things they do through the summertime especially. Okay, so now we are on to Petal. Um, she's in Quambone, which is north of Dubbo. I may not have said that correct. This is a leaf off my nectarine tree. She's only two years old and cannot find anything on the trunk or branches. Could you please help me to help my tree? So I'm assuming what you're saying is, what I can see there is some sort of little leaf cutter or it's perhaps the, um, it'll be the, uh, it'll be a caterpillar. Um, so a moth will have laid in under the, the uh, cells and that's where the caterpillar will emerge from. It's not such a big thing. Um, if you have it all over your plants, you may want to deal with that. Um, look, when I see things like that, I just squish it. I don't know if that really grosses people out or not, but I just use my thumbs and finger, forefinger, and, and just squish those sort of things. I don't bother getting out a chemical or, or doing any damage. But if you leave them, they will come out and more than likely decimate uh, most of you, the leaves that they're coming out on at least. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would do. Squish it. Don't worry too much about it. Make sure that it's not over the entire plant otherwise your leaf looks pretty healthy it looks nice and green um, and you're in north of Dubbo yeah okay so it should grow really well for you there also okay so we're off to Jervis Bay in New South Wales and June has asked can you tell me what's happening with my magnolia little gem please it's been doing well in a pot for a couple of years now it has loads of brown and spotty leaves well, I would suggest by looking at your pot also, the pot is now too small for it. 
it looks like you've got something growing around the base of it also, which is pretty and it works fine, except that if you have, um, if you let the roots get too full in a pot when it's something like a magnolia, you'll find that you get um, a fungal problem. And it's usually um, from overwatering or the water being held in the pot for too long, i.e. perhaps the roots have gone through the bottom of the hole or if they haven't gone through the bottom, they can certainly clog the hole up. So you might find that. I would um, probably, uh, I would take off the leaves. I would take it out of the pot. I'd roll, turn the pot over, pull the plant out and then have a look at the root system and see how wet and whether that soil in there is dank or not. Um, you may want to then put it into the next size pot up. Just go four or five centimetres bigger. You don't have to go massive, but it'll give it some nice fresh soil around it. If you can't make it in a bigger pot, then use some sea salt, half strength sea salt, and let the pot dry out as much as you can without it being overly dry. Um, but yes, you have, if you think also that the roots might have a bit of an issue where they might be a little bit sodden, more sodden than what you'd want them to be, then um, give it a, um, um, a half strength spray of Manga Z Plus and that should help it for you. All right, so I hope that helps, Petal. Sorry, June. Uh, Christine of Gosnells. Hi, Christine. I think you might be, I think we need to do a special shout out for you, Christine. I think you might be, um, might be related to one of us here. Uh, so... How do I deter mosquitoes breeding in my bromelades? Christine, I have that same problem. Um, I love broms. They're really gorgeous, aren't they? Um, now, what I found um, where I live, and I live quite close to the river, so I have lots of mosquitoes anyway. And then I realised that there's twice as many in my backyard because I've got all these broms sitting around. And your problem, like mine, is that they sit in the funnel of the, the brom and then they breed the larvae. The only thing I think you can do with it is freshen the water every couple of days. So um, I usually just fill them up to overflowing and then the larvae um, is exposed. It comes out of the water. You've got fresh water in it. And that's the only way that I've found um, that I've been able to do anything with them. OK, so hopefully. Um, and yes, and we know you're Shaylee's grandmother. So I hope uh, you're enjoying the program. She's certainly doing a good job here. All right, um, announcement. Okay, just to let everybody know that the competition entries have now officially closed. Okay, we'll be drawing the winner at the end of the show, so stay tuned. There's some great prizes to be won. All right, so now let's have a sneak peek at the Garden Gurus episode 15. This is the last guru show for the year, and it's on tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon, sorry. Merry Christmas, mate. What? It's all yours. You're kidding me. Here's the glasses. Here, maps. Enjoy. Oh. An absolute ripper. Mate. If you've got an old bathtub like this, you're real luck because they're great for creating a fun garden bed. I think the trendy term now is upcycling. Vegetables, herbs, even microgreens. Now the frame itself is set up with these adjustable shelves and under each one are magnetic strips and you can use this to attach, in this case, a pump. Christmas only comes once a year, so make sure you get your stockings well filled. Oh, I'm glad there wasn't a Santa suit that fitted me. Um, okay. So let's, uh, so yeah, watch that tomorrow afternoon. Should be good. Um, don't forget to include your state. It makes it so much easier for me. All right. So Brenda at Gippsland in Victoria has asked, could you please tell me what this is? Uh, these are on my hydrangeas and I'm in South Gippsland, Victoria. Thank you. Now, um, okay. I think that's cottony cushiony scale. I was going to say mealybug but it's awfully big for mealybug. So I think it's cottony cushiony scale. And the way I would deal with that is some eco oil or some neem oil. Um, when you've got um, 
uh, when you've got um, bugs like that, when you've got scale, you need to cover them. You smother them with oil. So um, some sort of horticultural oil is the best for that. Um, and I would think that that's what they are definitely. So just um, either go out, pick them all off, squish them or um, use some horticultural oil. You're going to need to obviously go under the leaf as well as on top of the leaf. And that should, clean, that should do it. Don't do it on a 35 degree day. Or if you have to do it because it's hot, put them into, the, into a sheltered, shaded position and do it then. All right. Your hydrangea should start to look really beautiful at the moment too. Lynn's in Queensland and she said, could you tell me what this flower is, please? Yes, that is a spricula. That's a, um, do they call it scarlet lily? Um, isn't that terrible? I think it's called a scarlet lily. Um, it's a beautiful flower though. They're not as easy to find these days. Um, you get them often around bulb time. Um, so, yeah, Scarlet Lily. Um, Shaylee's in Kalamunda um, and she says, hello, I've been growing this cactus for a while and it sprouted a flower suddenly now that I'm not, <laughs> I'm not neglecting my plants. Do you have any idea of what sort of cactus it is? Yes. Now, that is an Easter Lily cactus. Isn't it just stunning? I've got a couple of these and um, all it takes is a little bit of looking after your cacti and they do some amazing things at this time of the year. Um, I've had yellow flowers, pink flowers, tangerine flowers, just it's been fabulous. Um, so yeah, that looks like a really nice one and it looks like it's got some pups on it too, Shaley. So you'll be able to, um, to get some extra plants out, out of there and by next Christmas, you could be giving those away. I like your little pot stand too, that's really cute. All right, so that's an Easter lily cactus or an echinops. All right, so we're going down to Mandurah and Nicole in, is in Falcon near Mandurah. We're looking for some advice on what natives to plant in our backyard. We live in Falcon and, the, and are quite close to the beach. We're trying to find a landscaping company that deals specifically in natives but have had no luck. We are tired of putting in plants that don't do especially well and want to put something in that will last instead of having to change it every few years, any information. I would try, now you're in Mandra. I would try um, a very beautiful designer called, um, well, she is beautiful, but she does beautiful designs, Sue Torlak. Sue used to work up at St. Therea Nursery. She's been running her own business for quite some time now. If you go on to the, um, if you go on to our website, uh, guildfordgardencentre.com.au and have a look under landscaping, there's two links one's to the Landscaping Association and one's to the Design Association. And you'll find that Sue's number is on there. And when you go in, you'll see quite um, professional um, people are being presented there and that they will have examples of their work. And I know that Sue does predominantly natives and she's a beautiful designer. So it might be worth having a look at that. Sue will come with her own team. She'll have landscapers, people that will put in the hard landscaping, will plant the plants if that's what you wish to have done. Um, and she will come with her own professional team or people that she refers to. So it might be a good place to start there and move on from that, okay? Hey, Tyson, it's uh, our last program. I'm going to miss you next Friday. What are we going to do without Tyson in our lives? Uh, Tyson, can I please ask, can I please plant the nasturtium ex ex empress of India seeds in the ground or somewhere else? Can you please give me some tips or advice? Yes, Tyson, uh, you can plant nasturtium seeds straight in the ground. They're really tough things. Um, Yes, you could plant them now, uh, but I would probably wait till autumn time. It would be the best thing to do. Um, just uh, I'd soak them overnight because they can be quite hard also, but they'll take off for you. Thanks, Tyson. Thanks for being here every week and asking great questions. So Christine is out in Stirling. Hope you can help me with my native frangipani. The pictures I sent in early in earlier shows, some type of deficiency, and I've added trace elements a few months ago, and it seemed really good until the rain stopped. I do water it regularly. Okay, so um, you shouldn't have to overwater a native frangipani. They have a very deep taproot. They do have um, verticals, but very deep taproot. So it should have hit, especially if you're out in Stirling, um, you know, it's, it was quite, um, 
It was quite boggy out there in years gone past. So I think once your tap roots get down, you should be hitting some water. You might find that the soil is, is really alkaline um, or really acidic. I suspect alkaline. And that in that case, if it is, it will lock up some of the elements, the trace elements. So the plant actually can't access some of those elements that we need uh, or it needs to grow. So I would suggest that you have the soil. So dig down, go out from the trunk of the tree, out to the drip line, in fact, um, which is the end of the branches where the, the drip goes. Go down there, go down about six inches um, and... Uh, take out a tablespoon of soil, take it to your garden centre, get them to test the pH. If they don't do it, you can either drive all the way over to Guildford from Stirling or you can buy your own uh, pH test kit. It's not hard um, and uh, do your own kit. But if you find that it's highly alkaline or highly um, acidic, you will need to do something else and you will need to, to fix that soil so that they, it does. That may be why that's happening for you, okay? All right, so now we're going to Vinette um, and Vinette, hi, wondering where I can buy fruit fly netting for my fruit trees from, hopefully affordable too. Well, it's affordable, Vinette, because it's going to save you fruit. There's no point putting in your time, your effort, your money into water and fertilizer and preparing the soil, etc. And then finding that the fruit fly get it. So I see that as rather than a cost, I see that as an investment in my future fruit. Um, you can buy them on the internet. Um, you can certainly buy them through our garden centre. I keep promoting us and I don't mean to be doing that, guys. But there are other places also. We, I'm not sure where you're from, Vinette. But if you go on to this, um, there's a, a company called Green Harvest. And they have a good range of nets. Um, Ricet are another one that do nets and there's many garden centres these days that are in the areas where they, where trees are grown um, a lot, you'll find that they um, will have nets also, will be able to get them for you. All right, so Margaret's in Belgrave and not many of my tulips came up this year. Was it the stupid weather or didn't I, or I didn't feed them? <laughs> Probably a bit of both, uh, to be honest, Margaret. So um, not so much the weather. Um, Weather can change things and you can, and tulips can end up, if it's too wet, you end up with lots of thrip in your tulips. But you see those in the colour of the flower, whereas you didn't get flowers this year. And so I suspect that you didn't, um, I suspect that you didn't uh, feed them the, the year before. So when they die down, that's when you feed them. Don't cut the foliage off. Feed them, feed them. They die completely. Then the foliage will literally fall off as you pull them up. I would dig up your tulips um, and put them in the fridge or put them in a paper bag with sulfur on them into the fridge, say six to eight weeks before you plant them out next year. And hopefully you will get some, some flowers. So start feeding them before you dig them up. All right. Now, Karen's in Subiaco and I don't have an irrigation system at home. How can I keep my plants hydrated when I'm going away for the Christmas season? Lots of different things you can do. You can actually just get a jar full of water and a wick, you know, like a candle wick, quite a thick one, or a piece of um, soft, strong rope. Put it in one end into the water, the other end into the soil, and it will um, do it through it, drawing the water up from there. Okay. Um, you can also put a big bowl of water in the sh in in around your plants, which will help with the hydration, and it'll help with the humidity. I tend to put mine into the shower because it's the coolest part of the garden, uh, the the house. And then I do it that way. I did notice behind me also in this gorgeous, whoop, this side, Monstera, um, it, there's a bottle um, like a, a lemonade, Coca-Cola, something like that, turned upside down and just a few holes put into the, the cap and then filled up with water and that will just slowly leak into it. So hopefully that will help. Uh, Joe from Pickering Book, I have a big Monstera in a large pot at home. It has been in this pot for over a year now. When do you think I should think about repotting it? When you touch a pot, when you pick up a pot and you squeeze the pot, if it's soft, then the roots aren't out to the surface. If you can't move it at all, then it's probably root bound. And that's when I would be doing it. Um, okay, Christine, we've got a number of questions from Christine and Gosnells. What sort of fertilizer should I use for oranges and apples and when should I feed them? Oranges is different to apples. Oranges being a citrus, 
little more often. Okay, so every six weeks, except for through winter time. Apples, three to four times a year. I love a fertilizer called GrowSafe. Anything with a good balanced mineral and some microbes in it is perfect for, for um, feeding fruiting um, plants. She also says she'd like to put up some netting to protect from the birds without deterring the bees. Any suggestions? When you put the netting up, the bees have done their job already. So just as the flower is falling off and the nut or the fruit is emerging is when you need to put them on and they have already been fertilised, um, already been pollinated by the bees. Um, okay, so I hope that helps you, Christine. Then also we're unknown, but Devon has asked, what is the best mulch for WA Gardens? The best mulch is probably the mulch that um, that is best for those particular plants. So it's hard to say exactly which mulch. What you don't want is probably easier to describe. And what you don't want is a very fibrous mulch that then works in a capillary action and draws the moisture back out of the soil or holds the moisture at the mulch level and all the roots go up into it, okay? So that's not a good thing. Uh, so you want something that's nice and open and will hold the moisture in under the mulch. I love lupin mulch. I also like a carry peat bark mulch. Um, and I've had on, on various parts of my garden, I've also used wood chips, although I tend to use less of those. Um, but yes, the best mulch is what's best for your garden, but also let's not get one that has too much fibre in it. Uh, now, Matthew is in uh, Melbourne. No, I'm sorry, Christine is in Stirling. I'm going all over the place today. Um, I have fertilised the pawpaw, but still appears to be nutrient deficient. And the native frangipani is looking wonderful a month ago, but not so good now. How do I do? What do I do? And I've tried everything. I'm at a loss. Okay, well, Christine, you know, your nutrient deficiency, I think, um, did we answer this question? I think we may have. It's come in twice, maybe. Um, this is where I was talking about your um, soil being either um, alkaline or acid and locking in the, the nutrients so that the plant can't access them. So get down to your garden centre, get that uh, tested for your soil, and then we'll go from there because that I think we might answer a few questions for you. Now, Matthew has asked, and Matthew is in Melbourne West, and my our three-year-old finger lime is only flowering now. Will they be ready to pick in winter next year if they get pollinated? Um, yeah, mine were autumn, actually. Um, but, yes, they should do, um, and they're really satisfying once they come through. Mine is in a, quite a small pot. I need to repot it, and um, yet it just continues to throw flowers out and give me fruit. So um, keep in mind that, that feeding it every six weeks, is, except for through winter, is really important um, for finger limes as well. All right, so let's uh, now have a bit of a, a break and let's have a look at a sneak peek of episode three. It's the last episode of the Best Of series. Check this one out. Today I'm going to create a little kitchen garden in a pot using some bush tucker plants. Lily pillies make excellent hedging plants with lots of different varieties and something to suit most situations. But what a great garden, you must be so it's happy. It's amazing. It was quite dishevelled when we bought the home and this has really given us something special to look forward to for summer. <laughs> Looks like a good show. Should have a look at it. Okay, so let's have a look at plant of the week. Now, um, I uh, brought in hydrangeas last week and we talked about them as a plant that's often given at Christmas time. Um, believe it or not, even when it's, you know, 35 degrees, garden centres at this time of the year are flat out. Everybody's buying uh, presents for their, their dad and their mums and, and their friends. So I just wanted to bring in something a little bit different, a little bit more unusual, and something that you can give to all ages. So I decided to bring in some carnivorous plants. I haven't done this very well. And this is such a beautiful plant when you look at it. This is a sundew. What I want to show you is if I can get it into focus there. 
I don't know if you can see, but there's two flies right here, right here. Um, that have already been caught. So these are carnivorous plants. They're actually really easy to grow. I also bought in what we call a picture plant. It's a little bit hard to see the whole picture. There we go. If I do that, I'll hold it up. Now, these are interesting plants um, and, you know, all ages love to have them. And, of course, you've got your, your old Venus fly traps that every second child wants for Christmas time too. But these are just a little bit more unusual. Sundews. Um, have this uh, beautiful uh, leaf with all these very sticky, if you touch them, you're not really supposed to touch them. When you touch them, you can feel the stickiness of them. Um, and they catch the flies and they literally do. In fact, we caught one here not so long ago. So I've got another, I'm going to take home another fly from the Guru studio. Um, and then you've got the picture plants. And what happens here is the different ones, there's a very beautiful purple one that I think is probably the most, the best one for um uh, for catching flies and insects, but they have around the rim here, they have a, um, a, a scent that they exude, exude off and that attracts the flies and the bugs into them. And then the cap shuts um, and the, the fly goes down into here and it's digested. Um, it doesn't, it won't remove all your mosquitoes, but it'll help if you put it in a, and a gnats, the, um, are really good to, you know, if you've got lots of uh, indoor plants and you've overwatered them, um, then and you've got lots of gnats flying around, they're really annoying. Uh, these will certainly help also. So yeah, there's some gorgeous little ones. I'm, I wish I could get this as a really good picture, but it's an unusual plant. They're both unusual. All right. So that's uh, get down to the garden centre, get them to gift wrap them for you. And, um, yeah, make someone really, really happy. Garden week. Uh, sorry. Christmas week. Okay. Guess what? We're going to draw the competition. I'm sure you're all excited to hear the winners of the competition. I'd really like to thank Rowan and David and the rest of the team at Garden Express for supplying us with over $450 worth of giveaways. Um, this is all just for our viewers here in celebration of our final live show of the year. This is the perfect gift to, um, to give all of your gardening friends and family for Christmas. And don't forget, everyone's a winner with that extra 20% that you receive on top of the gift voucher. Be sure to head into Garden Express website and get your hands on a gift card. All right. Now, thank you so much. And let's take, uh, all right, I'm not allowed to look. So let's have a look at this. So just while we're doing it, I want to thank you very much for all your support during the live show this year. It's been a new gig for me and I've really thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, it will, means the world to me and the Gurus team that you guys tune in every week. Um, now, our producer has written all of the entries. She's placed them inside here. I've picked the first entry. So let's draw the names. So the winner of the first of the $60 voucher is Carol and she, Carol and Kel Tanner. So Carol and Kel Tanner, congratulations. You have won the first $60 gift. All right, I'll keep that separate so we remember who that is. All right, and another one. Oh my goodness. So the winner of the third $60 gift voucher is ah, N. Wintle. So, Ian, you have also won a $60 voucher. Okay. Winner of the, are we on third? Yes, we're on the third $60 gift voucher. Oh, Christine Talbot, you have won a $60 gift voucher. Congratulations, Christine. Okay. Da, 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 da. The fourth and final of the $60 ones. And this is going to, ah, Christine Rankin. Two Christines. So, Christine, thank you very much for entering into the competition. Okay. Now for the, the final grand prize of $240 gift voucher is, don't look. Okay. Da, 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 da. 
June LaFrance. June, you are the lucky winner of the $240 gift voucher. Congratulations. So uh, Shaylee will be in touch with you after the show and um, explain to you how you can collect your, your winning vouchers. I want to say thank you very much. I've thoroughly enjoyed this year being on The Gurus. I really appreciate the opportunity to work with um, our producers like Shaylee, who's on today, and our tech guy, Russell. If it wasn't for those guys, um, I would just ramble on forever and not get this show closed before the tomorrow. Um, they do such a great job and I've really enjoyed working for them. Um, we'll be back next year with a brand new series of The Garden Guru Show with plenty of live shows. Remember, you can always jump onto our website and catch up on the previous stories from The Garden Gurus at thegardengurus.tv or the YouTube channel, the same, thegardengurus.tv. Be sure to tune in this weekend for the very last episode of The Garden Gurus Show and the last episode of The Garden Gurus Best Of Show. Um, we'll miss you, but we'll see you next year. And until then, Merry Christmas, everybody. Stay safe and thank you for joining us. Happy gardening. <laughs>